Welcome back to Crypto Comics, all you beautiful people in Webtown, for what is undoubtedly the rarest day in Rob Liefeld appreciation season here on Crypto Comics. This is a journey into the world of Arcade Comics, which would have been the third publishing company Rob Liefeld opened. And this is, uh, this is what happened to Youngblood after they left Awesome Entertainment. Yesterday we talked about what happened to some of the ladies of the Liefeld verse. They all went to Avatar Press. Youngblood ended up getting released through this new imprint, Arcade Comics. As far as I know, there were only four comics ever released by Arcade, and I have three of the four to share with you today. This is Youngblood Genesis. This was released in July of 2003. It is a two-issue miniseries. I do not know if it, uh, it actually was completed or not. I think it was, but I'm not positive. Youngblood Genesis was the brainchild of Kurt Busick. It was actually thought up 10 years earlier in 1994, but did not become realized until 2004. And uh, we'll just look at it real quick. This one was actually a disappointment. Now, some of you will recall, if you've been a regular viewer here on Crypto Comics, if you've been participating in Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season uh, the last two months, you will know this story, believe it or not. If you recall from those image comics in the 90s, Rob was repeatedly marketing a book called Youngblood Year One, which was to be written by Kurt Busick. Well, we fast forward a decade, he's taken the plot that Kurt Busick had, he's hired a brand new writer named Brandon Thomas to flesh it out, and uh, he's hired the twin brothers Chad and Eric Walker from, I believe, Dallas to handle the pencils. I am not a big fan of the art in this comic book. This is basically telling the origin of the Youngblood team, how they were formed. How they were formed, and there's a character in this named Jacob Wind, which I don't believe is any relationship to Jason Wynn from Spawn, but uh, interesting similarity there, no doubt. Uh, there was a book. You will recall when we did the review of the final crossover Rob ever did with Extreme Studios at Image Comics. It was called Extreme Destroyer. Uh, one of the books we didn't cover in that crossover was called Night Strike. It was about Dutch and Cable and Cabot from Bloodstrike, all being part of a government team, and some stuff went down. I don't really know what, but they kind of cover that here, I'm guessing, but I'm not sure. They they ruthlessly murder a guy in joking fa in a joking fashion, and it gets, you know, drudged through the media like you wouldn't believe, just... And our boy Graves, who's the leader of Youngblood, lo these miniseries, uh, realizes that his goose is almost cooked and he needs to come up with something better. Here we see our boy Jeff Terrell, who you know better as Shaft, when he was just an FBI cadet out training. And Graves is gonna, gonna come up with something. He gets the idea to maybe form a superhero team because everybody likes an action movie. Americans love an action movie. And that's what this is going to become. And so he finally gets it all together right in the nick of time before he's about to get shit canned by the president. And he forms this brand new superhero team. And this is the first part of the story. So there you have the original young blood, Photon from the planet Acura, the man they call Chapel, Sentinel, Battlestone, the Catellan warrior combat, and the Android Die Hard. And this will continue in an issue too, believe it or not, surprisingly difficult to find. The only covers of issue one of Youngblood Genesis that I've seen are these two. I've never seen this for sale, this for sale, or this for sale anywhere. The book you hold in your hands marks the debut of Arcade Comics. Our goal here is to create an entertainment experience that doesn't stop when you come to the end of the issue. We hope to engage the imagination Spark conversation with stories that can be collected in your mind. Youngblood Genesis was a long time in the making. The seeds of the project were planted in the fall of 1994 with a finely structured plotline from writer Kurt Busick. Youngblood creator Rob Liefeld has shepherded the project at all stages, with art assignment finally being awarded to the Walker brothers, Chad and Eric, with finishes by Rob. Awesome Colors' Matt Yaki detailed the pages over the past year, yet it was newcomer Brandon Thomas who proved to be the final piece of the puzzle. BT's script is his first professional gig, yet the writer hit the ball out of the park with edgy dialogue that rounds out the team. 
So if I'm to understand this correctly, this entire comic book was drawn based on the plot by Busick. It was colored over the course of a year, uh, clearly in Matt Yaki's free time, I would, I would, I would be willing to guess, uh, because that's the only reason a comic would take a year to get colored. That's outrageous. And then Brandon Thomas was brought in to write the dialogue. This is not the best way to create a comic. Yes, the Marvel way does work when you're a very experienced creator, when you're a very experienced writer, you can handle that. We have seen that even the pros in this thing they call Comicsgate uh, have put out subpar products, and I believe it is because they chose to make their comics this way. Cyberfrog being a case in point. That project was a year late, was roundly rejected by many fans who were very patient, waiting for what was supposed to be a modern comic book masterpiece. And instead, it was a big flop for a lot of people who were not emotionally invested in their $25 or $50. They were able to see through their investment and say, I had to wait a year for this piece of crap? Sure, yeah, it's drawn well, absolutely. But the story is lackluster. I expected a top-tier story. When I'm spending $25 on a comic book, I expect the story to be top-tier. I expect the story to match the artwork. And uh, that clearly didn't happen with Cyberfrog. That definitely didn't happen with here. Here, You'd think uh, they would have been able to find some artists who didn't draw faces. So weird. Like, seriously? This is it? This is what you're giving us? This is your first outing from Arcade Comics, Rob? Yes, yes, the logo does look similar to the Crypto Comics logo, but it's not. And I, uh, my own personal experience, I can actually tell you that the Marvel way is not... Not fun at all. Uh, there is a project I've been working on for many months now. Uh, I had a, a very talented young artist come to me with already finished pages and say, what do you think of this? And, and offered me the script that had been written by someone who had never really scripted much before. And what I read in the script really didn't seem to make sense with the art. And after speaking to the creator, uh, who was the artist, and him telling me what his original vision was, I was absolutely shocked. The writer had just done whatever they wanted. It really didn't make any sense with the plot that the artist had in mind, the creator had in mind. And so he asked if I could help him with uh, developing the story more and writing some dialogue. And it became so incredibly difficult that we decided to scrap some of the pages and just say, we need to just redraw this this way, this way, and this way to make our lives easier so we can build an in-depth plot that will keep readers engaged who are interested in picking up our Sword and Sorcery comic book. That'll be coming out next year, and we'll talk about it more in the future here on Crypto Comics. Anyways, where were we? Timing is everything. Although Youngblood Genesis is the first comic going to press for Arcade, it is it was released at the 2003 Comic-Con International San Diego alongside Youngblood Bloodsport. So these were released in a previous version? I wonder if anyone has a copy of those. That's very bizarre that these were released a year earlier, and now they're going to print. In two, yeah, I, I guess. I believe you will find that Youngblood Genesis serves as companion piece to the Mark Millar Rob Liefeld collaboration. While Genesis showcases the very inception of government-sponsored celebrity super teams, Bloodsport is the cautionary tale with similar themes run out of control. Both storylines feature Shaft, Bad Rock, and the usual suspects, yet at completely different stages of their careers, from their rise to the inevitable fall, with the treacherous graves forever pulling the strings. Further, both Genesis and Bloodsport are cornerstones for the extreme brand label, with themes and characters bridging to future titles such as The New Brigade by original series artist Marat Michaels. That would not be released through Arcade. That would be released years later by Image Comics, which we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Arcade Comics is a fun time. I don't think it's weird that they uh, talk about this being cornerstones for the Extreme brand label. Shouldn't it be the Arcade brand label? Uh, Extreme Studios was the old initials. Arcade Comics is a fun time. Thank you for checking out our products and your support. Your comments and questions are most welcome. Your pal, Jimmy S.J., President, Arcade Comics. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you there were multiple, there were multiple grammatical errors just in this alone. And that does not bode well for the comic book company. It tells me that there were not enough employees in the shop making sure things were running smoothly. And that might be why there were only four comic books ever released by Arcade Comics, at least to my knowledge. 
As you see the Crypto Comics logo again, almost. Up next was Youngblood Imperial. Now this, this is a story written by uh, Robert Kirkman, drawn by Marat Michaels. This, this came out uh, 11 months after this came out. And this, as far as I know, was the final issue released by Arcade Comics. Uh, Robert Kirkman tells an interesting story in here. These pencils and letters are by Marat Michaels. I think it's interesting Marat's lettering stuff now. He's just making some, uh, some extra money on the side doing that. And this is the story about normal human beings shooting up the blood of new genes. New genes in the Liefeld verse are, are mutants, essentially, right? And there's been a few takes on, on how the new gene developed. Uh, you know, was it seeded by the keep, as we saw in Youngblood Volume 2 from Image? Uh, and then there's other stories that completely rewrite that. Uh, Judgment Day by Alan Moore completely kind of throws Volume 2 out the window. Uh, the art in this is not the best, in my opinion. Here we have Wilder, who was from uh, Bloodpool, if you recall that review. Uh, the art is not the best. I'm not a big fan of this whole, like, sketched sort of look. Uh, I do like the blood. I do love the violence in this. You did not get violence like this in the 1990s from Image Comics. And so I thought that was ballsy. But again, like, you look at Vogue, and there's, what it, there's nothing attractive about how this is drawn at all. And uh, it was just kind of disappointing to me. Here we, here we have a villain from the past, if you recall that. The previous uh, reviews of Youngblood here on Crypto Comics. And this is just really, you know, setting up what should have been, uh, I'm assuming, a miniseries. There you see that ultra-violence that you just don't expect from comic books is all of a sudden brought into the world of Youngblood. I thought that was a really interesting choice. Uh, pretty ballsy. Pretty ballsy to, to make that choice. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't go anywhere. You know, it just it doesn't go anywhere because it wasn't allowed to go anywhere. Welcome to the first issue of Youngblood Imperial. I hope you enjoyed the ride that Robert Kirkman and Marat Michaels assembled because it gets much, much wilder from here on out. But, but it doesn't. The writer of The Walking Dead wanted to play in Rob Liefeld's world because he was a big fan. You know, we, we, we are the same age. And when we were both kids, we were both massive fans of Image Comics and Youngblood. And I wish they would have given Robert the opportunity to write uh, this entire miniseries. It would have been interesting to see what he came up with because he is a good writer. We'll talk about uh, the other time he teamed up with Rob Liefeld. We'll talk about that tomorrow here on Crypto Comics. The comic book I am most interested in talking about from Arcade, though, would be this guy right here. This is Youngblood Bloodsport, and this was an absolutely glorious, glorious comic book. This is filled with adult language, thanks to Mark Millar. All of the art is by Rob Liefeld, and I just, I couldn't have been happier reading this. Uh, they're doing cocaine. They're talking about getting BJs. Uh, they've got Scott and Logan as uh, their little booster boys, you know, playing funny little, uh, funny little war campaign games there, if you know what I mean. And we've got, uh, Shaft is just kicking the head off this guy and saying, eat shit and die, shithead. So that kind of tells you everything, and the language gets much, much more explicit than that, to be honest. That's, that's actually really tame for this comic book. The art is absolutely phenomenal. I love Shaft's new outfit. He looks great. And I would love to read this whole comic book to you, but there's a lot of foul language in it. And we try to keep things, you know, family-friendly around here when we can. Yeah, we might... Drop a little, a little colorful language from time to time, but nothing compared to what you have in this book. And this is actually extremely modern. You know, I've spoken frequently about what I love about Youngblood is that whole celebrity status that you never saw in other super team books from Marvel or DC or even from Image. And Youngblood really pioneered that concept of the superhero as celebrity. And this takes it to the next level. This is... You know, okay, now we've been a team for a decade. We've had highs, we've had lows. Some of us have left the team. Uh, but things, other than like this neck bone here, what the heck, Rob? This is not a woman's anatomy, bro. Oh my goodness. Other than that one shot, though, I'm really feeling it all. Um, very modern, very modern, very much for adults. 
deals with an adult plot. Smiling Stan's girls. Here we go. See, Stan Lee runs a porn shop in this. Kids, if you're wondering what that is, ask your parents. Tell them, don't tell them Crypto Comics told you. Here we see all of the old team mates from all of the old Youngblood books compiled together. And they've been brought together because a new Youngblood team is going to form. But my boy Graves... You know Graves has a plan that's much more nefarious than that, and I don't want to reveal what it is. Let's just say it involves Youngblood teammates murdering each other. This story is so excellent. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Murder in the first, right there. That's what this book is all about, and it should have been continued. The fact that this comic book did not have a second issue is a crying shame. It is a crying shame. Look at this. They're advertising Bloodsport number two. It just never came out. I'm absolutely compelled, fascinated by the idea that there is a script by Mark Millar still laying in a, a drawer at Rob Liefeld's desk. This should be realized. How this script did not end up being a complete miniseries, I will never understand. But it was phenomenal. It was hot, hot, hotter than hot. So out of all three of these young blood stories that arcade tried to get off the ground i would i would recommend you just pass these two by and stick with young blood blood sport uh, if you're over the age of 18 if you remember the glory days of the 1990s if you've been a longtime fan of young blood track this comic down even though there's not an ending this single issue is so incredibly good and such an incredible departure from everything that came before it that you will, you will long for a second issue. You will be just like your boy Crypto, wishing that Rob Liefeld would pick up the ball and just see this thing through because it is worth it. I would gladly buy uh, an issue two and an issue three and an issue four and an issue five and an issue six. This miniseries should be completed. Mark Millar was doing something very special uh, even if it did have uh, adult language, very graphic adult language, uh, man, this is this is for that kid who grew up on Young Blood and is now a full-grown adult. This is uh, this is going to entertain you. I promise you that. So, if this incredibly rare installment of Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season has moved you, has compelled you, has has jumpstart your own creativity, has, has drawn you in and made you wish you could find these in the long box at your local comic shop, I humbly ask that you hit that share button. Let people know about some of the more rare work that Rob Liefeld was putting out in his career. And then, absolutely, hit that thumbs up. If you're new to Crypto Comics, if this is your first video, do not be afraid to subscribe. You're going to want to hit that ding-dong for notifications. And we are coming back tomorrow. Ya boy Crypto will be back right here tomorrow on Crypto Comics.